the Happy Scientist Podcast. Each episode is designed to make you more focused, more productive, and more satisfied in the lab. You can find us online at bitesizebio.com slash happy scientist. Your hosts are Kenneth Vogt, founder of the executive coaching firm Vera Claritas, and Dr. Nick Oswald, PhD, bioscientist, and founder of Bite Size Bio. Hello and welcome to the Happy Scientist podcast from Bite Size Bio. If you want to become a happier, healthier, and more productive scientist, you are in the right place. I'm Nick Oswald, the founder of BiteSizeBio.com, and with me is the driving force of this podcast, Mr. Kenneth Vogt, my friend, mentor, and founder of the coaching company Vera Claritas. Today, we will be discussing the power of gratitude, and Ken, given the events of your life in the last few months, this is quite a good topic to begin back with. Yes, it's going to be interesting. It's uh, This is a topic that we've recorded once before, and, and through through circumstances, we lost the recording, <laughs> so we had to do it again. So it's interesting because when we first recorded it, we were in a certain place, and where we're at today is a little different, at least for me. And what's different, well, there's two things that are different that I, I want to I want to call attention to. Y'all have uh, heard this crying baby in the background that is actually a Siamese cat named Zeke. Well, Zeke is no longer with us. He he stopped eating about three weeks ago, and after a while, he succumbed. Oh, so no more was, Zeke. He was a star of this podcast. He was. And, you know, Zeke was, was 19 years old. He, he, he had lived quite the cat life. So I, I'm grateful that I had, had Zeke in my life. He was, he was a fun cat to be around. <laughs> and, then, and then there's one other thing that, that uh, it's a little bigger. <laughs> and this, this happened a little over three months ago. I had a stroke. And uh, everything stopped. Yeah, we, we stopped recording for a while. So it it's, so happened we had enough things already recorded that there hasn't been a break in broadcast. So y'all might not have noticed. But I don't know if maybe people are noticing now. If you listen to my voice, maybe you can hear a slight difference in it. Because um, I couldn't talk when, when the stroke hit. I couldn't swallow. Uh, my dis- digestive system had shut down. My entire right side just turned off. And... Um, yeah, it was it was quite something, you know. In six weeks in the hospital and and through all of this stuff, you can look at some, an event like this and say, "Well, gratitude. What is there to be grateful about in such a terrible thing? And, you know, such a tra- such a traumatic and such a a costly thing." You know, so I, I will tell you that I'm doing a lot better right now. So there's some there's reason to have gratitude there. I can make a lot more progress, but at least I can walk around now. My, my right hand isn't working very well, but um, it's getting better, not in ways that I can use it yet, but at least I can see progress. So uh, I've noticed that. And, and the things we're going to talk about in, in this episode, you'll, you'll see the application of how you can find gratitude, even in really hard circumstances. You know, some people could be very, very tore up about the loss of a pet, for instance, and and just think, well, this is just, it's just 100% bad. There's nothing to be grateful for. But the fact is, there is plenty to be grateful for there. There's a, you know, a lot of fond memories and, and a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of times that you can look back on that can't be taken from you. They're yours. And in, in the case of my stroke, when, one way that people can be robbed is some people will lose some of their memories from their strokes. I didn't have any memory loss. I didn't have any cognitive loss. And that's not my, my version of that. That's what the doctors tell me because I was in the hospital with other people that had these problems and, and I saw people that, that didn't know they were impacted. They were confused and they didn't know they were confused. And they, had, they had lost cognitive ability and they, they couldn't tell. And they, they couldn't remember that they had lost their memory. You know? So I didn't have any of that. So fortunate for me. But yeah, so... What it really comes down to when we're talking about gratitude is your intentions. Intentions always win. So if you have the attitude that, that you've been robbed, that you've been harmed, that, that you're not getting your fair shake, it's gonna, that's going to show up for you. Whereas if you have the attitude that, that 
there's a silver lining for, for every dark cloud, you're going to find that silver lining. So we're going to, we're going to talk about this from both directions because the, I first want to want to deal with when you don't feel grateful. And if that's where your starting point is, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, that's where you're starting. That's where you're starting. And if you're in that position where you don't feel grateful about things, you're going to see some, what I call phony costs for having gratitude. You go, well, I can't, I can't have gratitude because that would, that would evidence that I'm weak and I needed to be provided for. If I'm grateful for something, well, obviously it was something I couldn't do for myself and I had to have somebody else do it for me. You know, you can be in that mindset or you might be in, in the mindset that, well, I, I have it because I was owed it. This is, this is something I deserved. I should get this. And, and, so why would I be grateful about something that's just owed to me? It's like, you know, I, I get a paycheck at the end of the week or at the end of the month because, because I worked and they owed it to me, darn it. You know, as opposed to being grateful, like, oh, wow, a check. Thank you so much. Even though you expect it, even though it's exactly what you, what you anticipated, you still have the opportunity to be grateful for it. But if you feel like being owed something means you can't be grateful you're going to cut yourself off. So understand that possibility that just because you're owed something, you can be grateful about it. Just because you're not weak doesn't mean you can't be thankful that something is provided for you. You know, yeah, you're capable. You could cook your own dinner. But when you're in a restaurant and somebody cooked it for you and somebody served it to you, you can be grateful for that. Even though you could have did it yourself, you're not there because you're a charity case because you're too pathetic to be able to, you know, cook your own toast. You're, you can still be grateful for, for that experience. So th those are the things I would call the phony costs of gratitude. But how about this? There are actually real costs to gratitude. You're going to, there are some things you're going to have to pay to be grateful. And you're like, Oh man, that sounds terrible. <laughs> what am I going to have to pay? <laughs> so there's two things that come to mind. First off, gratitude requires humility. And we've talked about humility in past episodes and humility is really this, this miracle drug. It, it, you really, really wanna cultivate humility. It's, it's so beneficial to you. And it's hard to be grateful when you're not humble. When you're full of pride, and I, I mean pridefulness, not that you're, that you're properly proud of something you've worked hard for, but just thinking I'm, I'm better than, than, than someone else. Well, it's hard to be humble when you're stuck on pride. And when you recognize that, that, you know, I don't encompass everything. There, there, are, there are people that are smarter than me, people that are more generous than me, people that are more kind than me, people that, are, that listen better than me. There are people that, that have skills I don't possess. You, know, you, can, you can have this whole long list and it isn't, a, isn't a, about judging your deficiencies. It's about recognizing that in this, in this unique person of who I am, I have certain things and there's certain things I just don't have. And there's nothing wrong with that. We've all seen this too. And in, in, you know, maybe some of our friends, they have qualities we don't possess. Maybe some of our relatives. Maybe we look back at our mother and think, you know, my mother, my mother was so compassionate and I just don't have that gene. Or, or my father was so hardworking and I don't, that, and, and I had to learn that from him. And, you know, whatever it might be, if we can be humble, it gives us the opportunity to be, to be grateful. And when we're grateful, then we have the opportunity to, to fill any deficiency that would be there. Um, and even if it's not a deficiency, we can just, we can add to our positive qualities all because of gratitude. Another real cost of gratitude is it requires focus. You've got to see that there's something there to be grateful for. You have to notice it. And we've all seen that, you know, you, you, you and I used the, the example of a restaurant earlier, I'll use it again. You see people in a restaurant that just, they, they obviously have forgotten that somebody is serving them and they don't notice that the, that the, the waitress has been there right at the right moment every time. They don't notice that 
everything was plated beautifully and and prepared well. They just they just come in there, they they do their thing, they practically ignore the waitress, they wolf down their food, and off they go. Well, it's because they didn't focus. And and what they lost in that moment is they lost the opportunity to, to be grateful for someone to serve them and someone to cook for them and for someone to be creative in 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 making the food that they got to eat and someone to care about how it tasted and how, how nutritious it was. They, they lost all of those opportunities. So when, when you look at this and see, well, I have to pay the cost of humility and focus, you start to recognize the cost is very low and it is a very small investment and you can get a lot from it. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause for a moment here and let you uh, weigh in, Nick, if you had anything you wanted to add. I could feel you had a lot to say there about that, Ken. That was, I just <laughs> let you go there. Um, but having watched you, I think this, you know, having had a, a stroke and very unexpectedly, you know, the, the age you're at and the, the level of health you keep yourself at, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was really instructive to watch how you came through that. I, I've been in contact with you from literally the moment it happened. You texted me. <laughs> <laughs> as yeah. it was happening more or less. And then, uh, and we've been in contact all the way through. And, and the, the thing that struck me all the way through is that what you did at each point was you didn't focus on what you'd, what you'd lost, you focused on what you had. And, and that's the difference in that. And, and the, 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 um, what you've relentlessly been through all of this is unshaken, optimistic, and, and happy. And, and I, I, I'm, my reading of that is that a lot of that comes down to that focus on being grateful for what you've retained and what you will be able to get back rather than focusing on what you've lost. Exactly. And, you know, and I'm not a, a Pollyanna kind of person. You know, I, I, I think you properly label me an optimist, but, but I don't, I don't just fantasize about everything being perfectly right all the time. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not happy with some of the stuff that's happened here, you know, but or even even my present condition. There's things about it I don't like. But you can't play but guitar I, anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I can't hold a pick, you know. <laughs> but but you know, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe that will come back. Maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing about this too. I'm not tying my happiness to an outcome. I don't have to return to being exactly as I was, you know. So like for instance, I can speak right now. I don't sound exactly the same, at least to myself, to my own ear, it's as close. I did before. Yeah, it's but close. it's yeah, but it's close. And even if it wasn't close, I mean, if you saw me walk, I believe me, it's not close. <laughs> uh, people always used to uh, used to tell me that I walk too fast, and now it's like all I can do to to walk at eight tenths of a mile per hour, according to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's less than a third of what uh, uh, what is typical, and probably about a fourth of what I usually was. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to end up, but I'm not worried about the end point. I, I, I can, I can, I'm glad that I can walk right now. I, I'm able to go out in the world. I can do things and see things. So, so it's all good. I, I, I guess it, one other way to look at this is, is, and it's a thing we've talked about in previous episodes that using, um, you know, tying it back to some other themes that we've covered in this podcast is using you can use gratitude to, you know, give, give, make yourself in such a mindset that you're creating that dopamine um, all the time. So that, uh, you know, regardless of the scenario <clears throat> and one way to do that is to walk it right back to the ridiculous. Um, well, it's not even ridiculous it is generally things to be genuinely things to be happy about, but, or to be grateful for rather, but you know, even that you have oxygen, you know, yeah. And, uh, and then take it from there and, you know, okay, so what would it be like if I didn't? Well, that wouldn't be good. And so I'm glad that I have it and then build it on that. And then you see that regardless of the circumstances you're in, you can build out quite a lot of reasons to be grateful without even touching the sides. Yeah. You know, I just done, I mean, there was a third event that's happened between, between now and the last recording that I haven't even given any, any oxygen to. And that is, you know, I'm in Austin, Texas. And I don't know if y'all heard about what happened in Texas. <laughs> the, you know, all the, the, the electric grid shut off. 
and you know that meant no heat in the house for days and the water was lost all over the place and it was just a total mess and keep in mind i'm diminished physically so when it got cold it was very hard on me very hard on my body and in fact i think that's probably what did in zeke the cat you know it was that cold really impacted him too you know so again we can be all tied up in all this like oh man you know, what are we going to do? And, and instead, I, I figured out, well, you know, I can get warm. I can put on more clothes. I can stay in bed. You know, I can, I can deal. And I got through, you know, and other people got through. And, and, and you know, we can be a support to each other. But you know, so, so, in fact, let me, let me hit now what I'm calling the dividends of gratitude. We're going to cover areas that are there. There's five different areas where you get dividends for gratitude. There are emotional benefits. There are social benefits. There are personality benefits. There are career benefits. And there are health benefits. And I'm, I'm not just offering you my opinions on this, I, although I am offering them. Uh, um, I, there's also there's a, 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 a decent study that will be included in the show notes that you can check out if you want to see the, the basis for all of this. It's not just It's not just my personal experience or or my feelings about it, or my undying optimism. This is this is what what the studying scientists have found to be the results of gratitude. We do so, like to tie it back to science, though, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Nick, you are already alluding to some of the emotional benefits, but um, you know, this a very simple one: gratitude makes you happy. And if you refuse to have gratitude, it makes you unhappy. It'll rob you of happiness you already have. So, I mean, again, this is a studied matter. Gratitude makes you happy right there. That should be enough reason. We, we could stop talking right now and go, you know what? It's, that's, that's enough to make it worth it. But, uh, I mean, there's, there's another 20 things after this. <laughs> so, gratitude also has a strong positive impact on psychological well-being, on self-esteem, and on combating depression. So if you feel like you need any help with your psychological well-being, if you feel like your self-esteem is not as solid as it could be, if you've suffered from any kind of depression, gratitude is going to help you. And in that moment, you might feel like that's the moment I least want to be grateful. Well, here, here is something to think about. Gratitude is a choice. Gratitude isn't just something that washes over you and like, well, I'm grateful because a feeling of gratitude showed up. Like you choose it, you pick it out. You can look for things to be grateful for. And, and, and I will be fair to you here. If you're not feeling grateful and you go looking for it, at the beginning, you're not gonna feel like there's much to, much to find. Well, don't find a lot, find a little. Just see the small thing. Well, you know, I, it's cold in the house, but at least the refrigerator's still working, you know? <laughs> you know? Hey, and you think, well, the refrigerator is already cold. What's the difference? It's like, you know, find something, find something simple. And once you find something simple, then find the next thing and keep going. Just, it's a habit. Yeah. I, I do like the oxygen one. That's always my one. You start with that <laughs> and, and off you go. But the, yeah. the best one I've seen of that is, I think you'll talk about it later, but the, uh, or the description of it is the one that James Altucher uh, talks about, about gratitude being a muscle. So if you just mm -hmm. use it for no reason, if you just keep consistently using it, consistently using it, then it becomes stronger and your, exactly. ability, your ability to feel it becomes stronger. But I guess you're going to touch on that later. Well, it, it, well we can touch on it right now. Okay. Um, James Elster <laughs> is a very interesting guy and, and we'll have a, a link to some of his stuff out there too. He's got a podcast and he does a blog and he's just, just a Renaissance man kind of guy. And I'm not, I'm not even pointing to him as a, you know, he's not a scientist per se. I mean, he's an educated man, but he's, you know, that's not where he's coming from. This is a, he's, he's a man of practicality. He's learned things from living it and, and, and he's good at communicating it. So I'm grateful that there's guys like James Altucher out there that, that we can point to. I'm grateful that there's all these studies out there that we can point to. And, you know, there's, there's just so much there. Now, another thing about gratitude when it comes to emotions is gratitude makes your positive emotions 
more powerful and more resilient. So if you have felt like, you know, I'm, I'm eight days of rain, you know, I'm, I'm always in a bad mood. I'm always a downer. Well, the way out of that is to have more gratitude and it'll start re reinforcing the positive emotions you have. And you might think, well, I'm never happy. I'm never, I'm never joyful. I'm, I'm never, uh, you know, laughing or what. It's not true. It's not never. It's just not often. Or maybe it's not, not very powerful when you're doing it. Or maybe you're not, you're not exposing it to the world, but, but you're feeling something inside. The more you do that, the more you have gratitude and the more you, the more of those positive things will pop up for you. And then the more of them will be expressed. And as they're expressed, the, again, it's just an upward spiral. And gratitude is a very important part of that. So when it comes to the idea of expression, let's talk about social benefits. You know, gratitude impacts how trustworthy social and appreciative we seem to others. So when you're grateful, when you thank the waitress, when you thank a coworker, when you thank your boss for handing you your paycheck, you're, you're creating something positive there that other people are picking up on. And again, this is an upward spiral. Other people will help you be more grateful if you give them a chance. So you demonstrate your gratitude. People like it. They're, you're going to get positive feedback. And it will improve your friendships. It'll improve your family relationships. It'll improve your romantic relationships. There's no, there's no downside to this from a social standpoint. You're, you have only things to gain. And whether that's that you have a friendlier interaction with a cashier or you, you have a deeper interaction with the love of your life, you know that gratitude is going to help with all of that. So now let's look back at yourself again. Personality benefits. Gratitude makes, makes us more, more optimistic, which is, you know, which is good for you. You're going you're gonna to be happier just being more optimistic. Um, go ahead, Nick. No, I was... I, I, oh, okay. no, I, <laughs> I thought you were just, leaning Just agreeing with you. <laughs> okay. Gratitude now is going to make you more giving. And, that, and you may feel like, well, why would I care about that? Well, you're going to care about that because it gets you good results. It gets you good reactions. So, and a lot of giving is quite simple. It could be something as simple as giving a compliment, give, you know, giving somebody a priority. Uh, it's not that you have to give away your, you know, what is your valuables. There's, there's lots of ways that you can be giving. And by the way, go ahead and give away some valuables too. It's you get great payoffs for that. Gratitude can also make you less materialistic. And, and you may think, well, why do I care about that? Well, because when you're materialistic, your happiness comes from things. Well, things can be lost. Things can be destroyed. Things can be stolen. They can turn out to be inadequate. And, and now your happiness is tied to something external to you. Whereas if you become less materialistic, your happiness is yours. You choose it. And gratitude can be a generator for that happiness. Okay, now let's get super practical. How about career benefits? Gratitude makes us more efficient managers, more effective managers. And again, this is, this is from studies. <laughs> It's not just, although I think most of us would, would realize just from our own experience that, yeah, when my manager acts more grateful to me, when my manager thanks me for work that I do, that I was assigned by, by him or her, that I, you know, that I showed up for work, I feel good and I feel better about them as a manager. Well, you want to be that person too. So, um, you know, whether you've got, you've got, uh, you know, undergrads working for you or you or you lead a team or whatever it is, when you have gratitude for the people that work for you, you will be more effective as a manager. Gratitude reduces impatience and it improves decision making. So imagine if you didn't feel impatience in your job, would that be an improvement for your career? You think you might perform better if you were never impatient in your career? 
And what if you made better decisions? Do you think that's possibly going to impact the, the state of your resume? You know, I mean, that, gratitude gives you these things. And finally, gratitude helps you find meaning in your work. So this, this is one thing that I think that, that life scientists and scientists in general have uh, an embarrassment of riches in. A lot of people toil away in this world in thankless jobs and meaningless jobs, jobs that the people doing them find meaningless. But in this field, there's a great deal of meaning to be found. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity to feel like you're doing something valuable, that you're aiding humanity. That, you know, and, and I realize that, there's, that there are some tasks you may think, man, all, I'm just the person who ends up cleaning the lab all the time. Well, guess what? A clean lab makes all the difference. You know, so even, even in the menial tasks, you're doing something that is going to impact the rest of the world positively. And that is a wonderful thing. And if you can be grateful for that, if you can be grateful for that work, giving you that opportunity, well, again, your career is going to flourish. I, and so, you know, how many benefits have you gone through here? About 10 or so, maybe? More than that, all of these benefits of gratitude, which, as we, we were discussing, is a habit, and um, and there are more that you haven't even got to yet, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. In the show notes, show notes will have a list of all these things, and um, so if you go to uh, bitesizebio.com forward slash podcasts, find the Happy Scientist, and this is episode twenty three or something. Uh, I think it's twenty three. Uh, the power of gratitude, and. What strikes me is it's always really useful to look at the reverse. So people who don't do, don't feel, don't practice great uh, gratitude, or who have got out of the habit of it, or have never got into the habit of it, they're they're the opposite of these things, and, it, and it's, it's such a simple switch. Um, I'm not as someone who practices this perfectly, or even to any degree of uh, of what it could be, but but it's so easy to see the switch logically. Um, you know that. If you're, if you're always focusing on uh, what you don't have or what's going wrong or not appreciating what other people are doing for you, then of course that makes you less fun to be around, less respected, less happy, less successful, and more dependent on material things or you know, um, artificial dopamine surges, as we were talking about previously, yeah. um, to, 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 for your own happiness. And so, again, it comes back down to does this convince you that you want to be more grateful in your life? And if so, then, then uh, um, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, that practicing gratitude, and we'll talk about more, more how to do that, I think. Um, practicing gratitude is a decision you might want to make for yourself. Sure. So let's, let's add one other area of benefits. That's health. Gratitude, uh, there's evidence that gratitude reduces your blood pressure. Which is a good thing because blood, you know, high blood pressure can cause strokes. I've told, been told, <laughs> <laughs> and with you know, and this is interesting from in my personal case because I've never had high blood pressure in my life, but I had a high blood pressure event and it caused all this. So like, boy, I really, I'm really gonna double down on gratitude after this, man. I don't, I don't yeah. want this to happen twice. I'll tell you what. I'm going to say that gratitude is, uh, is uh, not is maybe uh, necessary but not sufficient to re reduce blood pressure since <laughs> you are a very grateful person and you still had high blood pressure, but that's another story. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, yeah, this is like everything. It's just, there is no silver bullet for anything. Everything yeah. we talk about on this podcast, these are tools that you can use. And, and for some people, some tools are going to be far more um, um, important for them to apply than others. Well, fine, great. Use the stuff that works for you. Yeah. But hey, you know, I want to be healthy. Gratitude may improve sleep. That's another one that's 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 really useful. And that's something I can say. I have always slept like a baby all my life. And I, I when I hear people talk about how they have insomnia and they can't sleep, it makes me sad because I just can't imagine that I having to suffer that. But <laughs> but hey, gratitude can make it easier for you to sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping, look for ways to be grateful during the day. You will carry less stress into bed with you at night. Definitely. And, and here's another one. This is an interesting one. Gratitude may increase your frequency of exercise. Like, why would that be so? 
Well, because when you're depressed, you don't feel like exercising. When you're angry, you don't feel like it. You, and you know, you're put out, you're sad. You just don't want to. Whereas if you're grateful, you just feel more in tune with yourself. And you're like, you know what? I've got a little energy left. I can still do that. I can still get a workout in today. I, you know, or I can get up a little early and do it. You're, so again, there's health benefits. So, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things in, on this program, but I don't think we've ever had something with a list that had emotional benefits, social benefits, personality benefits, career benefits, and health benefits, all from doing one thing. So, wow. One, one very simple thing that you can do consciously and just establish a habit of. Okay, right. you, yet again, you've convinced me that I need to up the game on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll give you a way you can up the game. And this is something you don't have to do forever, although some people do. Uh, but you can do this just temporarily is start a gratitude journal, and, you know, which is separate from a, from a, other journals you might be doing. You might be doing journaling already and think, well, I don't need that. I already journal. Like, no, I want you to have a specific journal that is a gratitude journal. You know, and it's not going to have a bunch of long entries in it. It's going to have simple stuff. And just as you come across things, when you realize there's something to be grateful for, write it down in your gratitude journal. And it's like, well, I'm grateful that that uh, my spouse made breakfast this morning. I'm grateful that my my child picked up her toys. I'm grateful that my boss said hello to me when I walked in this morning. I'm grateful that I've got all this great equipment to work with. Yeah, you know, I'm grateful that I I got an education that prepared me for this for this career. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I was able to walk in under my own power today. I'm grateful that I had a car to drive you in. I mean, you can go on and on and on, but you're going to, you're going to be surprised at the beginning. It's going to be, well, I'm being grateful about the same thing again. Good. You're grateful yet again, that somebody prepared a meal for you. That's great. Don't blow it off. Cause Oh, well, I was grateful for that yesterday. Or I've been grateful for that all week. You know, every time you're grateful, you're, you're gaining something. And if you, if you're journaling, you're going to start to notice things to be grateful for. You're going to realize, well, I'm grateful that so-and-so was nice to me and I'm grateful that so-and-so, but you know what? I haven't taken note to be grateful that the mailman was nice to me. I hadn't taken note to be grateful that, you know, my colleague was, was, was um, friendly today. I, I haven't, you know, whatever it is, you're going to, you're going to open up your eyes to things. It's, and we go back to that cost of focus. Well, this is a one of the ways to pay that cost. And it's not hard. And, and it's the kind of thing too, that when you do it, you do it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no, there's no gun to your head here. If, if you just do it first thing in the morning and that's all you do, fine. If you do it throughout the day and you forget some of the time, that's fine. Just, it's just something to do to just to hit the reset button for you, to get you in a gratitude mode. And at some point you may decide and you may decide just after a few days or a few weeks or a few months that I, I get it. I'm, I'm plugged in now. I don't need to do this anymore. Or you might just enjoy it and think, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep having a gratitude journal. I, I, I always find the idea of a gratitude journal a bit kind of, uh, I don't know, not that appealing um, mm -hmm. because it's just kind of unstructured and stuff. But I do like mm -hmm. the way that um, James Altucher um, uh, approaches it in the daily practice and the daily practice is linked in the show notes for today mm -hmm. um, and what he talks about is just write down 10 things every day to be grateful for and and the way what he says is he has these um little notepads like you know like a waiter has and mm -hmm. he'll just every day write down 10 things and, and just quickly 10 things to be grateful for and it's like doing 10 press-ups in the morning or something like that you do it and if you want if you do it every day then you'll get a cumulative effect and right. that, that's for me is a good one because you can, just, you can just say, right, in the morning what I do is I check my email and then I do the 10, grateful thing, 10, 10 things to be grateful for. And that's just part of the, the ha habit. But that just works that muscle mm -hmm. and, and it gets um, just a little bit stronger every day then. Right. Now, I know some of you out there are listening and you're, you hear that and you go, 10 things to be grateful for. There are not 10 things in my life to be grateful for. There aren't five. Okay, we challenge you to do it and find out. You may find out when you, when you press yourself for 10 things to be grateful for, you're going to find them. They're there. You just, you just haven't noticed them. And you got to take action. 
we, this is not an intellectual exercise. This is, there's, there's got to be action. And that's what will flip the switch for you. I, I always think, find that, that if you're think, trying to, you're struggling for things to feel grateful for, it's because you're looking, trying to push the boundary outwards to things that you don't take for granted, but you wish you had. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go if you if you go backwards and start saying things like I'm grateful for running water, I'm grateful for that there's not a war in my country, I'm grateful for that I have enough food, then you know stuff that you just take for granted, then you can there's thousands of things you can find, and then and that's the easy way to start the snowball happening. Exactly. Yeah, and and you might feel like oh I'm cheating to be thankful for running water because it's always been there my whole life. No, no that's not cheating. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, be grateful for something that seems like it's automatic. That's cool. Yeah. Because you, then more things like that will start being automatic for you. Yeah. So there's one final concept I want to cover. And that is, the, how is gratitude different from grateful? And you might think, well, they're basically synonymous words to just, you know, use different in sentences. But here's the difference. You can be grateful or you could be gratitude. You're like, wait a minute, how do you be gratitude? I don't I understand. Be grateful because great being grateful is an action I would take. Be gratitude. Well, that's the if you can embody gratitude when it is so such a pure part of your essence that that's how people see you, that's how they think of you. It's an identity factor for you, it's not just a behavior. But it's, but it's actually an identity factor. Everything changes. And this, you're going to find the same thing about, you know, you are happiness versus you, you're being happy. Be happiness. Don't just be happy. Embody these things. The, so the stuff that, that we recommend on this podcast is, is to help you have the most joyful possible life, to actually be a happy scientist and not see... Th those two words as being oxymorons. Uh, well, being a scientist is a very serious and dismal business. How could I be happy? You know, like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it, there's no reason not to be a happy scientist. And there's no reason to be a miserable scientist. You don't have to do that. It's not required. So, and it'll all come down to this difference between what are you, are you just doing stuff or are you being it? And we want you to be gratitude and and get all the benefits that we've discussed today coming from that. Yeah. I think, as you mentioned previously, this is one of the very powerful, but simple to deploy and simple to understand tools um, mm. amongst the toolbox that we're talking about in all of these uh, episodes. So I think that in a way, this is a great one for people to start with if they haven't latched onto any, any of the other suggestions you've made in previous episodes. Yeah, and it's a very doable one. Mm. Uh, always after these things, I'm like, yeah, Okay, I need to do that more. <laughs> the <laughs> list gets really longer. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Ken. That's I think that was a yep. Extremely, you've come out with all guns blazing in the after your uh, your setback, and mm -hmm. in more ways than one. But in this episode, especially, yeah. Um, and remember that if you want to go back in time and listen to, or if you haven't done so already, that in episodes one to nine of the podcast. Um, we talk about some of the foundational principles um, that Ken bases this stuff on. Uh, those are human needs, core set, mindsets, and charisma factors. You might find that useful. So again, go back to episodes one to nine to get those if you haven't done so already. Uh, you can also get more by uh, joining our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash the happy scientist club, which is all one word. And you can get more episodes of this podcast on bitesizebio.com forward slash the happy scientist, all one word. So I think we'll wrap up today. And thanks again, Ken, for a great, um, a, a great episode. And, and we're grateful for your speedy recovery. Thank you. And thank you for your input on this episode too, Nick. Take care, Ken. Until next time. Happy Scientist is brought to you by Bite Size Bio, your mentor in the lab. Bite Size Bio features thousands of articles and webinars contributed by hundreds of PhD scientists and scientific companies who freely offer their hard-won wisdom and solutions to the Bite Size Bio community.